Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge. We're going to do this video. We're going to talk about a rifle to pistol transition, when to do it, and what the benefits of it are. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, before we start the video, make sure you're subscribed to it and make sure you got your notifications on. That way we can get you uh, keyed in as soon as we launch a new video, whenever we do that, every week or every other week, or whenever that is. Now, we're going to talk about rifle to pistol transition. And what that is, is that my rifle stops working for any reason. That could be because it's out of ammo, or it could be because there's a stoppage of some type. Rifle could go down hard, so I may not have a rifle that works. I'm going to have to get a gun up that does. In this case, that gun is going to be my handgun. Uh, distances involved in this, guys. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've taken training. Uh, I know in the Marine Corps, I said, oh, transition if you're 25 and in. I was like, well, what if I'm like 26 yards away and I got a transition? I mean, that's off out of bounds. But all joking aside, guys, what this really means is, is that we're at distances. We're having a fight that's so close that for me to even try to fix this rifle means there's just not enough time without me sustaining damage or my teammates sustaining damage. So I want you to think about it's situational rather than distance. You know, if I'm at like 30 yards and I've got cover or I've got other teammates I can pick up that slack if my rifle fails, it may be better for me to fix my rifle. But let's say we're at close quarters or inside of a structure or we've got real close opponents. Me doing a median action, smacking and racking and trying to get back in the fight, that may fix it, but it may not. But even the time it takes me to go smack and rack, that may not be enough time uh, in those kind of situations. So fail-safe method at close quarters in a close situation like that, fail-safe is going to be to get rid of the rifle and go to the pistol. As I said, this is about like, you know, your rifle stops working for whatever reason. Uh, there's guys out there that will teach you to like diagnose what's wrong on the rifle, you know, look in the ejection port, all that. It just eats up time. So I have identified that my rifle doesn't work when I pull the trigger and nothing happens. I've identified everything I need to know in that case. So we're gonna go to the handgun immediately on that. Uh, the first iteration that I'm gonna do for you is I'm going to do an actual reload on my rifle. In other words, I run out of ammo, Let's see how long it takes me to actually reload the rifle and get another shot on target. I'll show you on the timer uh, how long that takes. And then after that, I'll go to the uh, rifle to pistol transition and you'll see the time difference. I'll show you the time on that timer after each run. Uh, I'm going to shoot this at seven yards, pretty typical room engagement distance or hallway or close quarters kind of engagement there. So uh, this is pretty representative of the distances involved and the, and the times involved that's going to be required for you to have to do that. Uh, a couple safety valves if you're going to try to do this. Uh, number one, I would always recommend uh, that you begin any kind of drill, uh, any kind of practice stuff with, with it dry. In other words, dry rifle, dry pistol. That way, if there's any safety issues, if there's anything that needs to be tuned, uh, you can do that with a dry run. And uh, that's one thing you want to do. You can do this drill just mechanically dumping the rifle and drawing the pistol. You can do this with a blue gun as well, uh, or with or a dry weapon as we talked about earlier. So. Uh, one thing you want to consider uh, on an AR, although this would work with any rifle, uh, one thing you want to consider in an AR, when you pull the trigger and it goes click, in other words a hammer falls, you won't be able to put the safety back on. Uh, any other time, if you can flip the safety on, try to do that, but it's as safe as it's really going to be. You know, if I pull the trigger and nothing happens, you know, that means that there's, that there's nothing going on there. So I want to dump the rifle and immediately go to the pistol, but first iteration is, we're going to go with a simple reload on the rifle and we're going to see what that is shot to shot and then we'll do the transition. Alright guys, first iteration here we're just going to do a reload. We're going to do an empty load uh, shot to shot. We're going to do an empty load shot to shot and see what that looks like. Alright, so I'll get the shot timer started up here and I will go on the beep. Okay. So that shot to shot, guys, uh, 4.67. Uh, I really wasn't trying to burn the speed down. Uh, first shot broke right about a minute, and then or a second, I should say, and right about there. So, you know, you're talking about three and a half seconds, maybe a little more to do that, and that's me knowing that that's about to happen. That's not a realistic representation of how fast that you would actually perform that task in a real situation. That's me with a front-loaded response going off an auditory cue. In real life, you're going to be going off of a visual cue and you're going to be not expecting that to happen. So maybe you could even double that kind of thing. Uh, you could double that time in many cases. So let's get set back up and now I'll do a, a rifle to pistol transition. 
So now what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to do a rifle to pistol transition. Uh, I have not warmed up today. This is all cold. I just woke up, had a cigar and a cup of coffee, came out to the range and filmed a video for you guys. So this isn't warmed up. This isn't like 30 runs and then I put up the best take on the internet for you. This is an actual representation of cold uh, skill set. All right, guys, here we go. Rifle to pistol transition. Uh, let's see how we do. All right, guys, so what you got right there is about 279. Uh, rifle shot broke right at about 0.8. That's typically where I'm at. And then from that rifle shot to the pistol transition was about 2.7. So we're talking about a two second difference. So as you saw, that could be substantially faster than a rifle reload. And as I said, guys, that's cold. That's no warm ups. I didn't come out and practice this and then put up like after 30 tries the best take that's a realistic representation of what you can expect so as i said safety valves guys what you want to focus on uh, is you want to focus on actually dropping that rifle and immediately going to the pistol guys we don't need to just let this drop because if you do that you're going to jerk yourself and you'll be off balance so all we're going to do lower the rifle down and immediately go to the handgun just like this uh, pistol draw guys is as normal straight up straight out on the front sight uh, during this drill what you're going to figure out though is that on a rifle uh, you're going to have a holdover. So for rifle shooting, you got to have your holdover. Pistol shooting, there is no holdover. And so we've got to remember that. So let's take a look at the target over here. And I think that uh, what you're going to find, guys, is that right here, these shots are exactly where they needed to be. Uh, my holdover with the rifle, right up here nice and high. And with the pistol right there, it's good. So this was my, my uh, first one. With the reload, I did two shots, shot, reload, shot, and this is my transition, shot to the pistol shot. So we want to really keep those things dialed up. Uh, a lot of this information, guys, I put in my American Rifleman book uh, with the transitions and how to work on those things. So if you're interested in those drills, i got a lot more like it in my American Rifleman book. But if you really want the full experience and to get better and really have somebody that can help polish up your technique and your mechanics, uh, come on out to one of our classes at Valor Ridge. We really specialize in helping people get better with this minimal amount of rounds fired, but a lot of repetitions to help you get better. If you found the information in the channel helpful, go ahead and subscribe. Follow me on social media. That link is down below. And as I said, if you really want to help get some good tools, some good shooter development, come on out to Valor Ridge and we can help you. This is Reed Hendricks with Valor Ridge reminding you the lessons that we learn are written on tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge. <laughs>